first glance, it's just another ordinary surgical procedure. But this is a perfectly healthy man about to have his hand amputated. A convicted cattle thief, he's the first person to be punished under Islamic or Sharia law, now sweeping across the Muslim north of Nigeria. These images, recorded by Sharia activists, keen to display their civilized method of punishment. We are telling people that, look, this is what God said in his law, and whoever dares to commit offenses against God and against humanity will receive that punishment. saying that Islamic Sharia law is gaining an increasing foothold in Great Britain. The director of the Institute for the Study of Islam and Christianity has even gone so far as to say that there is, quote, an alternative parallel unofficial legal system operating in the Muslim communities there. In the basement room of a kebab shop in East London, students of the London School of Sharia have gathered to talk to me about how Islamic law operates in the UK today. A recent study by think tank Civitas concluded there are around 85 Sharia courts currently operating in Britain. Anjem Chowdhury sits in judgment at one of them. We are a service uh, free of charge to the Muslim community as a reference point for Islamic matters in marriage, in divorce, in partnership and company disputes, for inheritance matters, for people who want to become Muslim, and general advice and the rulings. If uh, somebody lost a finger, uh, uh, because you know he was he was uh, he was hit by somebody unnecessarily, then he deserves the equivalent of ten camels and uh, whatever that may be in sterling. Chowdhury wants to establish an Islamic state in Britain, an institute fully fledged Sharia law throughout. That would mean cutting off people's hands for stealing and stoning women for adultery. But in the absence of a state to support that, for now he can only judge civil matters. These men study under Chowdhury at the London School of Sharia, and they've all had dealings with his court. Saladin, formerly known as Richard, has been a Muslim for just five weeks. Chowdhury provided him with a certificate of conversion. I would discuss with Anjem and various other brothers what, how I came about becoming a Muslim, and why I'm a Muslim, and what it is that I believe. Um, and then I'd do your shahada to confirm that, you know, that is what you believe. If Saladin decides he no longer wishes to be part of the faith, the penalty under full Sharia law is death. This man reconciled with his wife in a Sharia court. He says it's a more selfless system of decision making. We refer to Almighty Allah in all of our rights and obviously um, we go there not, not being biased towards Muslims but rather wanting to follow the Sharia and obviously whatever, even if it's in my favour or in favour of my wife, we submit to that. Sharia law has been operating here in parallel to the British legal system since 1982. But think tanks worry about coercion when it comes to women submitting to judgment in Islamic courts. There are many women working on the front line of um, uh, domestic violence issues, honor related violence, people who run shelters who would attest to the fact that many people that they see do not go to these courts voluntarily and that they're forced by either the men in their family or in their community and this is a very very serious issue and needs to be addressed. That's a real fear in Britain where so-called honour killings are becoming more common. Recently police warned a married woman that her life could be in danger after her boyfriend was near fatally attacked with bricks and acid. She's now in hiding. This is London's biggest mosque, where thousands of British Muslims worship every week. Studies show only the most radical of them want Sharia law introduced fully into the UK, but that hasn't stopped the Muslim Arbitration Tribunal promising to triple the number of Sharia courts operating in Britain by the end of the year. Laura Emmett, RT, London. So-called Muslim patrols are again active in London, with vigilantes trying to impose Islamic ideals on the local population. And while arrests may have tempered the activist zeal, they continue to promote their views, some of which are quite radical. But moderate Muslim leaders fear their actions could discredit the whole community, as our T. Sarah First now reports. 
When videos of Muslim vigilantes trying to impose Sharia law on unsuspecting members of the public first hit the headlines, there was an outcry in Britain. Well, since then, some arrests have been made, but as RT's found out, these subtitled Muslim patrols are still in operation. We, the Muslim community, will continue to patrol the streets and clear the streets of all the vices and illegal activities. This group call themselves the Sharia Project. They make a point of differentiating themselves from the more hardline Muslim patrol, whose videos caused such anger recently with scenes like this. We are Muslim patrol. We are in North London. We are in South London, East London and West London. We command good and we forbid evil. Islam is here in London. Mr David Cameron, Mr Police Officer, whether you like it or not. This patrol, they say, that whilst they share many of the same views as the other patrol, they never employ the same aggressive tactics. And so I guess then you condemn the patrol for the going out and taking more sort of aggressive measures. I mean, um, looking at those patrols, I can say that it's commendable that Muslims have come out and actually decided to take some kind of action against, you know, these things taking place. But That's not to say that I could... Their actual actions and they're shouting at people and sort of... Quite, it was quite intimidating. Obviously, there is always a better way to do things, and um, my approach as a Muslim is to uh, advise my Muslim brother if I see him do an action that pe perhaps is not appropriate, I'll always advise him and say what is better. But for many in the mainstream Muslim community, these patrols are a cause for concern. With the videos ensuring widespread media coverage, many Muslim leaders have condemned their actions as wrong and unrepresentative. Um, these individuals are a fringe minority, you know, they don't represent the Muslim community. There's 2.7 million Muslims in the UK and they, they, they you know, they, they would never uh, condone this type of behaviour. Whilst the groups were very clear to us that they had peaceful intentions, some of the members are alleged to be involved with the more extreme patrols. One member served three and a half years in prison on charges of terrorist fundraising and inciting terrorism overseas. And it didn't take him long to make his more hardline views known. Now, if I say the law of the land can go to hell, I believe so, because I believe those who disbelieve in the oneness of God, their final destination will be the hellfire anyway. And those laws that they establish with that will go with them, with Pharaoh or Pharaoh, etc., into the hellfire. So I have no respect for the British law whatsoever. I asked the leader of the Sharia project whether he was concerned by statements like that. I think, you know, if you were to take a kind of passive approach, um, then I don't think the effect of the campaign would be that great. But I think what we're doing now and shouting and, and protesting and, you know, calling for Islam, calling for the Sharia in Britain, I think that is something that will really catch the people and, you know, engage in debate. But for many, both amongst the Muslim and the wider British community, there are worries not just about these actions, but about the potential repercussions a relatively small minority could have on a much larger scale. Sarah Firth, RT, London. A heated rally outside London's Downing Street sparked counter demonstrations and chaos. Muslim protesters had gathered, calling for aspects of Sharia law to be introduced into Britain. Laura Emmett reports. They may be few, but their message is clear. Introduce Sharia law into the UK. This is the face of radical Islam, assembled outside Downing Street, proclaiming its message at full volume. We find many of these people which call for human rights and whatnot, uh, they come out and they say that they want equality. But what equality do you get when a man legislates over another man? Is he not more superior than you? You're worshipping him by submitting to him and obeying his laws. And, and we will get a pressure like this until we, we all submit to one law, that is the law of God. Just a few metres away, struggling to get their voices heard, a group of moderate Muslims and non-Muslims are commemorating the first anniversary of the death of Nader Aga Sultan, killed following last year's Iranian election. They oppose Sharia law, even the Sharia courts that are already operating in this country. The British government is making a huge mistake giving them access to, to bring Sharia law courts. It thinks that it can reduce terrorism by doing that. It doesn't understand that this is the political wing of the terrorist movement and they're here to suppress people's rights. Not exactly quiet, but non-violent, despite the arrival of the nationalist English Defence League. They weren't welcomed by either group, although some among them said they came with a message of inclusion. We're members of the English Defence 
clean, we're not racist, black, white, brown unite against these Islamic creatures because we want one law for all in the UK so we've decided to come and join these to uh, protest against them. Our lads got arrested, they didn't do nothing, they got arrested and they should arrest him then because they are inciting religious and racial hatred. Racist or not, police didn't waste any time bundling the EDL into vans, saying they didn't have permission to demonstrate. But it wasn't over yet. Later, the demonstration was joined by a group carrying the banners of Unite Against Fascism. Sworn enemies of the EDL, it seemed at first that they were there to oppose them. But when the chanting got clearer, it became obvious whose side they were on. The UAF denies any association. There are a total of four different factions represented here this afternoon, both pro and anti-Sharia law. And demonstrations like these are a sight that's becoming more and more common on the streets of towns all over the UK and not just in London. And in fact, this is the second demonstration inside a week by an organisation called Muslims Against the Crusades, which promotes the introduction of Sharia law into the UK. Laura Emmett, RT, London. Uh, that uh, you know it is starting to spread and we're starting to see it in places like Great Britain where there is a subculture an, a, another set of laws that aren't on anybody's books is that radicalized Sharia law um, what some of the things happening in in Britain are you know Sharia has can cover everything from how you pray it deals with divorce and marriage and then it also deals with murder and adultery um, in Britain and in Canada and other places, the, most of the push for Sharia has been ab about marriage, divorce, inheritance. But there are now cases in Britain where, in a case of assault, in a case of stabbing, uh, uh, some Muslims set, set up a, a sort of their own Sharia court and adjudicated that on their own. And in fact, the, the family of the person who'd done the stabbing paid the family of the person who'd been stabbed, and that's all that happened, though. Is, is, this, this, is this the same law um, that is allowing people in, in Europe, um, at least in their own head, to get away with honor killings? It overlaps with that. In, in explain, first, explain that for anybody who doesn't know what an honor killing an is. An honor killing is that if someone in your family has has done something shameful, the whole family is ashamed. Let's say your daughter's been going out with a guy you didn't want her to go out with. Or let's say one of your family members stopped being a Muslim, became an atheist or a Christian or something. That this brings shame on your family. To get rid of that shame, you have to kill the person. <laughs> I, 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 I find this so frightening. It, this is the same kind of stuff that, correct me if I'm wrong, you're an expert in this. Is this the same kind of stuff that leads us to the mass genocide that we see uh, in Darfur? Um, yes. In, um, in Sudan, in the, in the previous genocide in, in the south, and now dealing with Darfur, the Sudanese government has received you know, judgments from Islamic jurists that this is in fact a, a jihad war, um, it's a war in the name of Islam, and they should proceed like that. And we are seeing an uptick all around the world. Are we seeing an uptick here in the United States in this kind of understanding? I know I talked to a guy here in New York that was born in New York, mm -hmm. and he says this is the answer. Well, you're seeing it first around the world. You know, 30 years ago, Saudi Arabia was about the only country which did these kinds of things. And now you've got a similar thing in Iran, in Sudan, uh, parts of Pakistan. You're seeing that in Nigeria. Now the, in the takeover in Somalia in the last year, the same thing is there. So these, these very radical extremist forms of law are spreading. And there's certainly some push. It's very weak at the moment. Right. But there's some push in the United States to, okay. uh, to have them. Paul, I, I just, we only have a minute left. I want to just rapid fire here. True or false? You tell me if these things are true or not. With radicalized uh, Shira... Uh, Shira uh, Sharia law. A woman uh, can be accused by one witness of adultery but needs four witnesses to say it was not adultery. True or false? Uh, correct. People are compelled to go to public beheadings as a spectator sport in stadiums. True or false? Uh, correct. In Saudi Arabia or previously in Afghanistan. Women are not allowed to be educated in parts of Pakistan. Correct. Women are not allowed to drive in Saudi Arabia. Correct. 
It, true or false, drinking wine, you can receive flogging. Uh, yeah, in quite somewhere in Sudan, that will happen to you. Paul, uh, frightening stuff. We will and I'm going to ask Jack right now if he'll please tell us what is Sharia law? Why I have should a we be afraid? Book here called Quran, the Dilemma, and it's written by former Muslims. Uh, ten reasons why it's bad for all societies. One, Islam commands offensive, aggressive, holy war, jihads against all non Muslim nations. Two, Islam orders apostates to be killed. Three, Islam orders death for Muslims and death for non-Muslim critics of Muhammad and the Quran and even Sharia law itself. Four, Islam orders unmarried fornicators to be whipped, put to death, and adulterers to be stoned. Five, Islam commands all homosexuals to be executed. Six, Islam commands that highway robbers should be crucified or mutilated. Seven, Islam commands that a male and female thief must have a hand cut off. Eight, Islam allows an injured plaintiff to exact legal revenge, physical eye for physical eye. Nine, Islam allows husbands to beat their wives. Ten, Islam commands that drinkers and gamblers be beaten. Sharia law ultimately creates society and diminishes freedom. Oh, Jack, that certainly is not from the Bible, believe me. I'm going to go on and give you a few headlines here very quickly. Egypt court sentences eight to death over video. And that's in America. Yes, absolutely. Oklahoma sued over Sharia ban and states in a debate on Sharia law. And then, Jack, would you like to read this? The threat is Sharia. The enemy adheres to an all-encompassing Islamic political, military, legal doctrine known as Sharia. Sharia obliges them to engage in jihad to achieve the triumph of Islam worldwide through the establishment of a global Islamic state governed exclusively by Sharia under a restored caliphate. That's a re relative of Muhammad's. Still Obama's top counter-terrorism advisor, John Brennan, insists that the President of America does not accept that there is a global war with Islamic terrorists. Oh, my. And then going on here, friends, you'll see it. Muslims demanding revolution Sharia law. Now, two radical Muslims who have set up a base of operations in the United Kingdom are calling for a revolution in India and then airlift to rescue 2,000 behind Sharia curtain. Now, that is in South Sudanese. And those are Christians. They're yes, getting out they of there are. before they kill them. Muslims announce plans to eradicate. You see that? Eradicate, not get along with, Christianity, Iran preparing Mahdi special forces. And oh, friends, this one is so, so important, showing how America is in danger. Shocking new reports are coming out of Iran. A defector from Iran has revealed that their revolutionary guards are using mosques around the globe, including some in the United States, as terror command centers, including mosques in New York, New Jersey, and Ohio. As long as America exists, we will not rest. America, we are in trouble, I believe. We are, Rexel. Awake, America. Romans 13, verses 11 and 12. Now, listen to me. Should we have anything to do with the Sharia law? Shall we unite as one as some of our clergymen who are away from God are encouraging us to do? Absolutely not. Romans 16, 17, mark them which cause the visions and offenses contrary to the doctrine of Christ you have received and avoid them. Ephesians 5, 11, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather approve them. Why? Because they who teach these things are connected with the spirit of Antichrist. I repeat, first. John 2.22. All out of the Bible, Jack, and something else out of the Bible, friends. This is why we're in your home. We would love for you to have peace in a troubled world. And the only way you can is to have the Prince of Peace, the Savior of the world, the forgiver of sins, come into your heart. The one encouraging thing that we can think about when we think about everything going on in the world is that this all points to something that we look forward to, and that is the coming of our Lord. The Lord said, when you see these certain things happening, look up. So many people I've said, look up in this day and age. But if the Lord does come today, would you be looking up? Would you be ready? Is he in your heart? Will you open your heart to him as Jack prays right now? Oh, folks, we need Jesus. Look at me and pray this precious Jesus. 
Savior of the world, the God of love, the God who so loved us, he shed his blood, gave everything he had in strength to save us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And it's washed away my sin. And right now, Jesus, I admit I'm a sinner for all have sinned. And I'm coming to you for salvation. Lord Jesus, come into my heart now as I receive you and believe in you. I pray this in your holy name. Amen. I love this. And I really want to have you take this to your heart. Jesus may come at any time. So we should be ready all the time. How true. We need to be ready for the coming of the Lord. You know, that is the wonderful hope that we have, looking up for the coming of the Lord. Remember, God cares for you, and so do we, so very, very much. Bye-bye.